channel and welcome if you're new here. Excuse this, I just finished Jazzercise, which was amazing, and now I'm going to start this week's meal prep. So I have three absolutely fantastic recipes. I'm literally so excited for these three recipes for this week. I have breakfast, I have lunch, and I have a snacky type of dessert. So if you wanna see what I'm meal prepping this week, stay tuned. breakfast this week I'm going to be making baked oatmeal with warm berry sauce you guys I'm so excited for this I've been wanting oatmeal and what's better than oatmeal with berries so let me show you what's in this week's breakfast so this is the cookbook that I took this recipe out of this is the true roots by Kristen Cavallari I love this cookbook you guys know I've used this several times I will link it down below for you guys but basically here is the recipe that I'm making so my inspiration came from here. So let me show you what's in it. First, you're going to need some frozen or fresh, whatever you prefer. For me, buying this frozen mixed berry was a lot more affordable than buying all my berries fresh. So I just went ahead and did that. So this is the organic mixed berries. I have some organic rolled oats from the Thrive Market. Don't forget about the link down below for Thrive and the $20 worth of free groceries when you join the Thrive Market. Love Thrive arrowroot powder this is my thickening agent which also came from thrive i also have some golden flaxseed powder you'll need one egg some lemon juice you can either do a fresh lemon or the lemon juice that i'm doing here vanilla extract maple syrup and coconut oil so let's get started on breakfast i also forgot to show you you'll need some sweetener alternative of your choice i of course am using monk fruit and some almond milk so let's jump into this warm oatmeal bake with berry sauce. First, we're gonna go ahead and grab out a saucepan. To that saucepan, we're gonna go ahead and add our coconut oil. I did measure mine out on my food scale, and we're gonna let this melt down completely. Once your coconut oil is melted down, we're gonna add half of these berries. We're reserving the other half for the actual sauce. So there's about half of my frozen berries. So we're gonna add those and we're gonna let those cook down a bit, about two minutes or so in that oil, get them nice and softened. If you're using fresh fruit, it probably will cook a little bit faster, but we wanna get these berries nice and soft. Once your berries have softened, we're gonna go ahead and add in our monk fruit sweetener. I have about three tablespoons. We're also going to add one cup of our organic oats and one cup of almond milk and one egg. So I went ahead and pre-cracked my egg just because you know me and shells. And lastly, just the tiniest bit of vanilla extract, about a teaspoon or so. And then we're going to give this a stir and we're gonna let this cook down for just a couple more minutes. I do have my oven preheating to 350 because we are going to bake our oatmeal. So let's get this stirred, warmed through and get this into our pan. I went ahead and sprayed my baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. Look at that, yum. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add that oatmeal mixture directly here to our pan. And then this is going to go in the oven at 350 degrees until it's cooked through. And in the meantime, let's make that warm berry sauce. So we're not dirtying dishes. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same pan. It calls for a small saucepan, but we're just gonna use this same one. I'm going to add one teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm also going to add the other half of my berries and I'm going to add my maple syrup. I measured that out on my food scale and three tablespoons of water and we're gonna get this coming to a boil. Once my fruit is at a boil, I went ahead and added in, sorry, it's foggy, but I mixed my tapioca starch with about a tablespoon of water and added that in here and you can see it's already starting to thicken up. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my heat and I'm just going to let this get nice and thick and this is our berry sauce. Look at this, yum. So I'm just gonna set this aside while the oatmeal continues to bake and then we'll put together our baked oatmeal with warm berry sauce. Look at this baked oatmeal. This looks incredible. It's big and thick, cannot wait. So what I'm going to do while it's still hot is I have one teaspoon of ground flax seed. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sprinkle that right over the top so that it kind of sticks as it's hot. And then once this cools, we'll package this up for the week, 
package up our berry sauce. Uh, this looks incredible as well. And I'll be back to show you the completed breakfast and give you all the smart points. All right, so here is the baked oatmeal. It looks incredible. And then there are my warm berry sauce. I just went ahead and divided them evenly among these reusable little to-go containers. And then I have a lid here. I'm just gonna pop a lid on the container and put it in this hole here. And then I will be pairing my baked oatmeal with probably some eggs. So that of course would be zero smart points. So that is my breakfast minus the eggs. I'm really excited about this. So basically I made four servings. It is seven smart points per serving on both the blue and green plan and four smart points per serving on the purple plan because you don't actually have to count for the oats. That is using regular maple syrup like I use. Now, if you decide to opt for sugar-free syrup, you can save yourself a couple of points. It would be five smart points on blue and green and only two smart points on the purple plan. So when I put this recipe on my website, I will make sure that I include points for regular maple syrup and sugar-free maple syrup. So I'm excited for this. I'll also link the True Roots cookbook in the description box for you. So this for me is a seven smart point lunch because I use the regular maple syrup. And then of course eggs are zero. So what a great breakfast. For lunch this week, I'm making a Buddha bowl. You guys, I'm so excited for this. This is actually a vegan recipe depending on the yogurt that you use, but it could be a vegan, definitely a vegetarian recipe. You could add meat to this if you want, but your protein's coming from your chickpeas. So I am not going to add any additional meat. So let me show you what's in our Buddha bowl. Cannot wait. You're going to need some quinoa. This is avocado oil. You could use olive oil, whatever you have on hand. I have some baby kale as well as some baby spinach. You'll need some garlic. Yogurt of your choice. I'm just going to be using this grass-fed Maple Hill. I really like this yogurt and I want to use it up. You'll also need a carrot or carrots, some lemon juice. You could use a fresh lemon or lemon juice, a can of chickpeas, garbanzo beans. You'll need a little over two cups of water and lots of spices. So we have salt and pepper, parsley, oregano, thyme, and I'm going to be using the Dax Original Red because it kind of has a mix of all of the spices that I want. It gives it a little bit of a kick, but not too much because I don't like my food super spicy. These seasonings are amazing. They're all natural, no salt, no MSG, really, really good. So they're great before weigh-in, great if you watch your salt, but they give you a punch of flavor. This one is actually one of my very, very favorites. They're zero points. Dax has over 20 different seasonings, so definitely check out their website. My code here on the screen will give you 10% off. I own all their seasonings. I love them, as you know, I use them all the time, so I'm excited to incorporate some of this. So definitely check out Dax, and again, my code is here on the screen. And lastly, you'll need some paprika. So let's make some bootables. So the first thing I did is went ahead and drained and rinsed my chickpeas. I'm going to use a paper towel and I'm going to get these as dry as I can. And I'm going to make a big mess apparently, but we wanna get our chickpeas as dry as we can because we're actually gonna roast these. And we wanna get these in the oven first because they do take a little while to roast. So I have my oven preheating to 390 degrees. So once your chickpeas are patted dry. We're going to go ahead and add them here to a bowl. And then I'm going to give another quick pat here. And then we're ready to add some seasoning and get these ready to roast. So the first thing we're going to do is add about a tablespoon of avocado oil to our chickpeas. And then we're going to add lots of seasoning. So we're going to start with some paprika and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. All of the recipe ingredients and measurements will be on my website. So you can get the full recipe there. We're also going to add just a pinch of salt and Dax Original Red. Definitely you guys check out Dax. I love their seasonings. And then I'm going to add just a pinch of thyme as well. Maybe a little more. There we go. And lastly, some organic oregano. Give a little dash of that. And then we're going to mix this up. That oil is going to help all of those yummy spices stick to our chickpeas. We're going to get these out on a baking sheet and into the oven. I had to line my baking sheet with some parchment. I always crinkle it up first. It helps it lay a little more flat. And look at these, you guys, yum. So we're gonna go ahead and spread the chickpeas 
and you can see there's quite a bit of oil and seasoning left so I am counting for the full amount of oil but we probably didn't actually use a whole tablespoon on the chickpeas so we're gonna go ahead and spread those out and then this is going to go in the oven until these are nice and roasted all the chickpeas are in the oven I'm gonna cook my quinoa so I have one cup of quinoa two cups of water. I decided not to use broth because I think we're gonna be pretty flavorful with all of the spices. So I'm gonna make the quinoa a little bit more plain. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil, reduce the heat, cover it, and let my quinoa cook. While the quinoa and the chickpeas are cooking, let's make this avocado dressing for our Buddha bowl. So I'm just gonna use my magic bullet because it isn't going to be a whole ton of it. So in my magic bullet, I'm going to add one clove of minced garlic. And this dressing is enough for all four bowls and it points have already been figured out and included in the recipe. And then I have one large avocado and I went ahead and figured the recipe on one large avocado. If you do use a smaller one, then you probably wanna refigure because this is where a lot of the points obviously are gonna come in. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough dressing for four Buddha bowls. So there is my avocado. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of yogurt. So this is that full fat Maple Hill yogurt. And lastly, a pinch of salt and just a squeeze of lemon juice. And then I have a couple tablespoons of water on reserve here, just in case I need it to blend this a little bit better if there's just not quite enough liquid. So let's get this on to my magic bullet and get this blending. So it looks like we do need to add a little bit of liquid. I don't think there's quite enough liquid in there. Ooh, but that looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon of water and get this re-blending again. And I'll just continue to add water until I have the right consistency for dressing. Yum, look at this dressing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it to a bowl. Ooh, yeah, this looks so good, you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my dressing in a bowl and just throw it into the refrigerator while we put together the rest of our Buddha bowl. Get this all scraped out, but look at that. It looks like a really creamy guacamole. It smells so good. Also, while everything's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and chop these baby carrots just into smaller pieces. We're also going to slice our spinach and our kale kind of into strips, toss it all in this bowl, and that's the veggies we'll use to put together the Buddha bowl. together these Buddha bowls. Now we're not going to put the entire bowl together for every day because we want our lettuce and our carrots to stay crunchy. We want our chickpeas to stay crunchy. So I'm going to show you how I will prep them and then we'll put an entire bowl together because that's actually what I'm going to have for lunch today. And I'll share what a completed Buddha bowl looks like with dressing and all the good things. So for the pack away bowls, you're going to need about a half of a cup of the cooked quinoa. Now, I don't know exactly how much quinoa. I think it might actually end up being a bit more just by looking at how much I have here in my bowl. But I did figure the points for servings on the one cup of dry quinoa. So I went ahead and added that directly to my bowl. To the quinoa, I am going to add a little bit of parsley just right over the top of the quinoa itself. And then we will put into little baggies the chickpeas and the green mixture. So I have a little sandwich size baggie here. To that, I'm going to add about a quarter of these roasted chickpeas. Ooh, they're still hot. Oh, and look at these, you guys. Gorge. They smell really, really good. They're nice and crunchy as they should be. So this is going to be pretty much the protein of our Buddha bowl, which chickpeas are an excellent, excellent source of protein. And then in another little zippy bag here, I'm going to enter add enter add about a quarter of the greens and the carrots so i'm going to fill this nice and full because i want a lot of carrots and greens once i go to eat my buddha bowl so i'm going to go ahead and add those and let's get these bags sealed up we'll do our dressing and we'll show you how these bowls come together 
have a little to-go container here, just one of these plastic ones. I don't have enough of those reusable ones that we used for the warm berry sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with the avocado dressing. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Pop a lid on that little to-go cup. So to assemble the bowl, very simple. We're gonna go ahead and add our bag of greens just right on top. We're gonna add our chickpeas right on top. And then we're gonna pop in that little dressing container. And there's our Buddha bowl. So this is how I'm going to store them for the week. I will pull out the greens and probably the chickpeas, probably everything before I warm it up, warm up the quinoa, and then add the toppings. I may warm up the chickpeas, that's to be determined, which you will see when I have this for lunch, kind of what I did. So let's put together the other three bowls. Where there are faces, there is pain. So here is my completed Buddha bowl. So once I put it together, I'll probably drizzle a little bit of lemon juice on top. You'll see that next here, the completed bowl. But this looks amazing. So by making it into four servings, it is seven smart points on the blue plan, three on purple because you don't have to count for the chickpeas or the quinoa, and nine smart points on green. Now I know that might seem a little point heavy, but this is a very good protein pack you have your grains your greens your protein you have a little healthy fat with the avocado it's a very well-rounded lunch so for me this is seven points because i do follow the blue plan of course this recipe will be linked on my website and i probably will have some sort of dessert or something with this as well but as for now we have a seven smart point Buddha bowl. So here is what the Buddha bowl looks like ready to eat. So what I did is warmed up my quinoa, kind of pushed it off to the side. I decided not to warm up my chickpeas, placed my greens, my carrots, and my chickpeas kind of in a line. Here I have my avocado dressing. I'm going to just spread that on top, mix it all together, topped it with a little bit of pepper. So this is what your completed Buddha bowl is going to look like. This looks so good, clean and filling. snack or sweet treat this week I'm making the ultimate healthy apple crumble I can't wait for this I've been craving cobbler some sort of like crumble cobbler I don't know why but I found this recipe and it sounds divine so that's what we're gonna make so let me show you what's in our apple crumble you're going to need some rolled oats and some flour this both of these came from thrive this one is brown rice flour and then organic rolled oats also some arrowroot powder for thickening six or so apples depending on the size you want about six cups of diced apples so i may end up using more but i'm going to start with six some maple syrup some seasoning now i don't have any nutmeg so again dax is coming to save the day this is the dax pumpkin spice you guys know this is my favorite pumpkin seasoning ever it's amazing so again check out dax and the discount code is here on the screen and down in the description box so this is going to sub for a nutmeg and then i'm going to add a little extra cinnamon as well because i love cinnamon and lastly i'm going to use some butter and this is the melt plant-based butter so let's make some apple crumble so first thing we're going to chop these apples i washed them we're going to leave skin on and we're going to dice them and toss them into this bowl and then we'll be ready to start putting our crumble together. I don't wanna stay here, no. Ain't gonna keep it low now. If you wanna go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. Just... So we're going to make the crumble or the streusel topping for our crumble. So I have one cup of rolled oats. I also have one quarter cup of flour. And again, I'm using brown rice flour. It's the only flour available anywhere. I can't find it in my local store. And Thrive only had spelt and brown rice, so I bought both. But I do have the brown rice flour. I'm going to add some cinnamon, and I want a lot of cinnamon. The recipe wants you to put in about a teaspoon. I'm gonna double that and do two, two teaspoons just because I am a big cinnamon lover. Oh, and just to let you know, I did preheat my oven to 350 degrees. So there's my cinnamon. I'm also going to add in my maple syrup and I just went ahead and measured it out on my food scale we want two tablespoons or 30 mils so I did 30 mils of maple syrup and then I also did my melt plant-based butter 21 grams measured out on my food scale or one and a half tablespoons so we're gonna give this a stir we want this to be 
a streusel consistency. So not totally wet, but not totally dry. And that's where that maple syrup and butter comes in. This is actually looking really good. So can you see how it's kind of a streusel? Oh, and let me just tell you how delicious this smells. So I'm gonna get this mixed together and then we'll start putting together our filling. Let's put together the filling. So I grabbed out a very large bowl and I have my chopped up apples. I did end up cutting up an extra apple. So this is seven of those very, very, very small apples. I mean, they are very, very, very small. To my apples, I'm going to add two tablespoons of my arrowroot powder. And this is just a substitution for cornstarch. I don't use cornstarch. So arrowroot is a thickening agent as well. We're gonna pop in some more cinnamon and you guys know I'm here for the cinnamon. In. We want about one and a half teaspoons for the filling. I'm probably going to double that and do about two to three teaspoons of cinnamon. And then I'm also going to add in my Dax pumpkin spice in place of the half a teaspoon or so of nutmeg. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of Dax pumpkin. And then we're going to give this a mix. So in my prepared pan, I went ahead and sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. Look at this, yum. We're gonna go ahead and add the filling ingredients. So basically our apples that we tossed in the tapioca or the arrowroot, sorry, arrowroot and cinnamon and nutmeg. So we're gonna go ahead and add those, spread those out as even as you can. You wanna make sure every bite has some apples in it. So I went ahead and pressed my apples down with the back of my spoon. Here is our delicious streusel topping. And we are just going to top our apples as even as we can with this yumminess. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to be so good. Now that arrowroot that we used in place of cornstarch, when these apples start to cook and release their liquid, it's going to bind with that arrowroot. And that's what's going to give it a really thick, like crumble, cobbler, apple consistency so the moisture from the apples will make that arrowroot just pop into play and it'll make it nice and thick and gelatinous kind of like you want to see in like an apple pie filling so can't wait and then this cinnamon topping with the melted butter and everything it will also melt a bit through the cooking process and make that nice crumble topping so there we have it this looks amazing this is going in our oven for 50 to 60 minutes depending on your oven or until it's cooked through you want to make sure that the apples are tender to the fork so let's toss this in the oven here's the apple crumble i just pulled it out of the oven this looks Amazing, my house could not smell better. Seriously, it smells so good in here. So I'm gonna let this cool just a little bit. I'm not actually going to cut this up until we go to eat it, but once it's cool, I'll try to dig in a little bit to show you the inside and give you the smart points. You guys, look at this. Can you see that? Like, ooey, gooey, oh, yum. Look at that, yum, it's literally like apple pie filling. This is going to be so good. So points on this, using the melt butter that I use, it is going to cost you six points on both the blue and green plan. And this is four servings, you guys. So you cut this into four, that's a pretty darn good size serving for six points. Four points on the purple plan. Now, if you opt for a light butter, like I can't believe it's not butter light, it will be five smart points. You're gonna save a point on the blue and green and three points instead of four on purple. So essentially you save a point if you go with a light butter. So whatever your preference is, both options will be on my website. So I'm gonna let this cool and put this away and this is going to be tonight's dessert. It looks so good. So here are my snacks for the week. So I have been loving these Lucy's cookies. These are gluten-free. These are incredible. A bowl. I love them. They're vegan, no peanuts, tree nuts, milk, or eggs. They are so good. They're two smart points per cookie. I'll show you guys the size. So this is the size of the cookie. It's actually a pretty darn good size. So I really like these. I have one, sometimes two, depending on what points I have left as my dessert. They are so good, you guys. I buy these off of the Thrive Market. I've also tried the chocolate chip, which is my very, very favorite. And these ginger snaps are really, really good as well. They have pretty darn good ingredients. So great sweet option if you're looking for kind of a sweetie sweet snack. 
And then I've, as you know, loving my good culture, whole milk cottage cheese. You can have half of a cup for three points, so I will do that. And then generally, I will have one to two points worth of these Mary's Gone crackers. Normally two, which I think is eight crackers. These are the Super Seed Basil and Garlic. I also bought these off of Thrive. And don't forget the link for Thrive is down in the description box as well as the uh, the link will give you $20 worth of free product when you join Thrive. So great time to join. They're back to their normal turnaround time for shipping too. So I will have usually two points of that and dip it in the cottage cheese. One of my favorite snacks, so about five points worth. And then of course the Built Bar. So I, as you know, really like these nut-based bars. All of the nut-based bars from Built Bar, with the exception of the coconut almond, are four smart points per bar. My opinion, it's worth it because for me, they keep me a little bit more full, a little longer. And I think that's just because of the 20 grams of protein, seven fiber, and seven fat that are generally in these nut-based bars. So they are 170 calories. I, I do like the nut-based better for, for keeping me full, but if I want you know a lower point option, I'll go with the regular. I love the peanut butter, love the peanut butter brownie. And then this is your traditional built bar that is three points. See how it's 110 calories. It does still pack 15 grams of protein, six fiber and four fat. So just a little bit less, but these are three smart points. So the rule of thumb, I get a lot of questions is if it's not a nut based bar. Now the coconut almond is three points as well. It's three points. If it's a nut based bar, like the toffee almond, the peanut butter, the peanut butter brownie, it's four points. But in my opinion, depending on how hungry I am, I will either pick a four or three smart point snack. I do have 10% off for Built Bar. That code is here on the screen. Also, if you're new to Built Bar, down in the description box is a special link just for you that will give you $10 off your first order. So check out the description box. So Built Bars, three to four points. Of anywhere from four to five point snack with the crackers and the cottage cheese and then dessert is two to four points depending on how many of these yummy cookies I decide to have but those are my snacks for the week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly my WW meal prep. I am on the blue plan and I do follow a clean approach to the WW program which basically means that I try to eat as clean whole real food as possible. So you saw some really amazing clean eating delicious recipes. All of today's recipes will be on my website. The link to my website is down below in the description box. Also in the description box is the link to head on over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of the community there, 15,000 strong and counting. So definitely head over and join us. Also are the links to all of my favorite things and all of the discounts that I can share with you. So definitely check out that description box. If you're new, I'd like to thank you for stopping by, checking out today's video. I'd love it if you'd hit that little subscribe button and that bell, that way you're notified when new videos are uploaded. You don't wanna miss a single thing. My lunch is ready. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you love meal prep and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.